Hello, this is Red Ochre. Today we're going to show you how to become fabulously wealthy on Minecraft. Um, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme, however. It does take quite the investment of time and uh, complicated wiring. First little invention I have for you uh, I'm pretty proud of is um, my villager dispenser. Um, villagers are a problem in Minecraft uh, because a lot of them sell a lot of junk and some of them sell some really good stuff so um, and if you try to breed them up to get the good stuff well then you end up with a mess of villagers you have to wander all over town to find the right ones and then they create a lot of lag so this system allows you to solve all of those problems quite well so the first part is the breeder here you can see the little hearts going up and down there because they're breeding and all you have to do to turn that off is to push this button and it takes a few minutes but the breeding shuts off that way you can control your lag and we have a culling system here to uh, uh, cull them uh, so that while you're doing other things, having fun, you don't have to have a ton of villagers once you've stocked your market. So, first we'll show you how this works. Normally I wait about 20 minutes of playtime after I turn it, breed them up and turn them off to start sorting them. But I just push this button, white button here and this dispenser dispenses a minecart and comes over here and brings them right here and um, I look at and she's selling raw chicken for emeralds now this is a pretty good pretty good villager you can get rich you just um, doesn't take much time to have a ever so often um, have a your chick collect your chicken eggs from chicken farm put them back in and farm chickens for lots of resources so she's about the third best one for getting emeralds um, so we're gonna keep her so just push the white button again that's the good egg button and send her off down to our market area now this guy is selling leather armor and unless you want to dress, dress in like the way it looks or whatever, um, you know, but leather armor is crap. So um, you might want them, but I'm going to show you the bad egg button. This is the bad egg button. It's the black one. We push this. It kills him. We've tried all kinds of different ways to kill him. We'd like to find a faster way to kill him. But... Um, that's uh, the best way we found so far that can return the cart. So the cart returns with another villager to sort. And this pro process continues. So let's go see how this works down at the marketplace. Alright, this is our marketplace here. It's got the villagers all nice and contained in easy to find stalls and um, so but the uh, periodically as you buy and sell deals change um, I hear that they're going to make it so the deals get better and better but um, so far that hasn't happened so um, if you don't like a what someone's selling anymore you we just open the stall here a little bit get rid of the villager pick up the cart and the cool thing about this system is now the very next villager and it starts at that end will go automatically go to the um, next open stall so it'll fill this stall that I just emptied first and then it'll fill the next few stalls um, Althorn's helping me by running the machine so 
We should see one come in here just shortly. There she is. Uh, you might you might like that particular one. We have a lot of coal, so we might keep her. I don't believe she was actually sorted, but um, <clears throat> then when another one comes, they'll come here. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Um, you can see that empty cart there. There really is a villager there, but um, uh, down here they're out of um, render distance from the actual um, sorter here. So you may want to make your village, uh, your market, just a little more complex than this. But all you have to do is load and reload, and um, uh, they'll appear. So, um, the next few should start arriving. We've got two empty slots left. There's one. And the next one will go here. And the third one will go to an overflow area. And just in case we send too many. There's that. So, Althorn, did we, uh, Tell, me, tell us if the indicator light came on. Yeah, the the light did come on. So I'll take you back here and show show you how that worked. If you don't, if we don't keep track here of our villagers, we have this light, and this light lights up if we sent too many villagers so we can go fix it, make more stalls and send them on. So that's how I'll go it works. empty it out and you can show them turn it off. We'll off. get to work on showing you how to build this. It's going to, it's not our easiest project, so uh, you'll you may want to watch some of our Redstone one oh one videos and uh, other things like that. We'll try to list some helpful videos to help you understand the the wiring and stuff and also uh, a good breeder video so we don't have to reinvent the wheel there as well an important part of this whole thing is this building behind me it is our treasury most of this structure is aesthetic um, but what we have is this rail c comes from our farm system to the tr thing, and we fill these full of um, sugarcane mainly and wheat. Those are our two cash crops. Um, sugarcane uh, kind of grows slow, but it's absolutely effortless to harvest. Push button harvesting. Wheat um, is you can produce a lot more a lot quicker but you know you have to spend a lot of time replanting so um, the other thing we've used to make quite a little bit of money pretty easily is chicken so let me take you down to where the farms are at Anytime we're out building various things around, whenever we come back for supplies, we just come right down here. And we walk in here, and we push this button right here. And a bunch of sugar cane comes flying at us, along with um, melons and pumpkins, um, but mostly sugar cane. As it's coming, we put it in this box. When this box starts getting full, then we start putting it here um, in in carts. We have here, and when the cart is full, push this button and send it on up. And that goes right to the treasury. When we harvest our wheat farm, we have tutorials on how to make this wheat farm if you want to know how. 
I'll link it in in the description here. Uh, same thing with it. Put it in the cart. You send it on up there. Things that we've managed to buy with all those emeralds from all the wheat and um, sugar cane. No, the sugar cane we turned into paper, which is what the librarian villager type um, did. And this is just some of the things that we, we were able to find diamond armor sellers and buy them a bunch of diamond tools with enchants for these pickaxes and a bunch of other things really helped us out on our iron we felt rich enough in iron to actually use iron blocks to decorate stuff with welcome to the creative server so we're going to show you how we did this I want to very briefly show you the breeder what it consists of is a village up here which consists of nine doors now the way this works you can get more information on the wiki but the um, Minecraft thinks this is a village right here if you set up the doors this way and um, this villager over here is going to enter the village and turn it on basically, turn it on, basically. Then we have two villagers down here in the box, and when the village comes on, even though the, they're not in the village, they're near enough that um, they'll start breeding as well. Want to hit the button? Sure. Ready? Yep. Here it goes. Yep. Now, the Minecraft only checks every few minutes so it might um, be a few minutes before you start seeing hearts if you're on a single player server you might have to um, uh, open and close the server or have everyone log out of the area if you're really impatient but it, it should start up um, before too long no matter what so let's just start with this button simple button the wire comes up here up this redstone tower up here and then powers both the uh, red the piston here and the um, track there the track is set to three ticks for the relay and zero for the piston now, as she goes across here, she hits this relay that um, hits detector this... Detector rail. Sorry, you're right. Detector rail, which hits this redstone torch, which acts as a, as a diode, so it can't go through to this other line to open, so she doesn't take damage coming into in here. And then the same thing happens as she's going back. Um, Let's demonstrate how that works. Yeah. A good view? Yeah. yeah. Now that you understand what's going on. Okay. There you go. All right. And so, then back. Now, the reason you need to trap her in there is because when you log and relog, she gets out of her cart um, because she's on power rail. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> she has to be on power rail for you to start her cold from with no momentum. So, that's why that whole setup is important. However, she's, if she's trapped in there and can't get away from the cart, then she's in the cart. All right, we're not going to wait for these guys to breed up. We'll just start adding villagers to get the system working. Yep. 
Yeah, oh, see starting to see too. hearts. All right, so normally what I do is I breed up to till I can't see anything in there, and I if I'm off doing, I know it's full because the lag starts. <laughs> so um, I come here and I turn it off, and I wait about 20 minutes for the kids to grow up because it, it, the kids really slow down your um, uh, sorting time because you don't know what they're selling, so you end up killing them, and it's just a waste of time in villagers. So, um, like I said, let's turn the breeder this, off. Uh, like I said at the beginning of this, this is the get rich quick scheme. This is it takes a significant investment. So let's start out with the very first couple of processes that you do when you call a cart. The s switch here just triggers. You have a relay going to both the uh, power rail and the and this dispenser full of dis carts that uh, dispenses the cart and shoots it down and goes around this. Now this structure des is designed to spin around and around um, if the vill if there's um, if it doesn't hit a villager until it hits a villager and then as it's going around when it comes back around it has to hit another villager to bounce back out but when it's full it just works like a charm when it's not full and it's spinning around you, you really just need to turn the breeder on and wait until you got enough villagers in there to work so then to send the villager on let's talk about that for a second so we're gonna we looked at her. We want she goes in that first bay. Another one comes um, because we hit that button. Now, how this works is it goes to this system. We have two relays next to each other, and um, one power going to um, this set of torches that goes then up here and powers. The power rail right underneath there. What this does, this first relay um, j just acts as a diode and it's set to one tick and these two are maxed out and it they go to the switch right here to hold it open long enough for the villager to get out. Um, so because if, if you just use the button then the villager goes and the villager goes back to the breeder rather than on Would you like me to demonstrate that? Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna hit the good egg. See this these tor these relays with a delay delayed it set up in this manner, delayed it long enough to um, do the switch there. Okay. So the next stage on their journey here they come up here, go up this ramp, and this block, this glass block right at the end of the ramp here is important. If you don't have it here, they, they can fly over and um, not drop straight down. We'll show one that's not done. We have a, a pressure plate at the bottom here that the villagers are standing on. And see this third bay isn't lit up. The pressure plate then lights up this redstone directly below it, and it goes over then to this redstone torch. This the what redstone wire beyond that torch isn't necessary. Could you stop the rain? Um, and it switch it, it then it switches the track to go on to the next stall. So each stall tells the track to go on next to the next step. Let's uh, empty these villagers real quick just to show um, how the track switches. Yep. So the track is set to defaults to just shoot them right through. And as soon as the villager's there, then it switches to the next one. Okay, send the next one. Alright, 
Now this next one I'm going to show you a uh, little addition we didn't do in our marketplace but is really awesome. If you just put a sticky piston right here then you have a automatic gate system here. Um, send the third one please. It closes. Now um, you can't use, uh, if you do use this, you can't use wooden pressure plates. You have to use uh, stone ones. So if we just... So, okay. as soon as you kill the villager, then the minecart isn't uh, activating the pressure plate anymore, and, the, and it goes down, and you can go in and pick up the minecart and you don't have to break and replace the block um, like we have been doing in ours so far. So let's send this villi uh, uh, another villager. I want to show you how it doesn't work. Oh, I didn't do that. Okay, now as you can see here because we made a 90 degree angle, the default northwest rule is working against us here. So you may not be able to uh, wire it exactly like this if if the default um, position is backwards, basically, then you're going to need to um, put a redstone torch right here hate creative mode sometimes. Um, right there and then that just reverses the polarity so it works now. So send the next one. And it works. Now this is our indicator light. Um, if you'll send that next one. And then she indicates way over here that the system is full and it's time to stop sending things. Now if you don't want to wait and waste a villager that way, you can do what we've done here and create this, I believe it's an ore switch. I get confused on those sometimes. But uh, just send this to... Uh, make sure that when all of the um, things are off then the light comes on and it'll give you a systems full without before one comes to this indicator thing but uh, we didn't do that and are probably not going to on our system because uh, it, the wiring for, for how big that is is really big you probably want to mention the accelerator between sets of stalls. Oh yes, that is an important thing before um, we switch to the next thing. Um, the reason I have three in a row, I don't recommend you go more than three in a row. You, you can put them um, three right next to each other. Uh, I, the reason we do it so close and don't have, give ourselves room to give everyone their own little store, just a little stall is functional. Um, we want to be able to do our shopping in the mall pretty quick. Um, but this is as close as you can put them because um, of the way the switches work. I don't recommend any closer than this. And then um, uh, you can only do this close for three in a row then you're gonna have to have a gap of one so that you can have an accelerator track um, right here you just need one I don't know why I put so many there um, but you can't put it right next to the uh, yeah that that right there will not work because uh, it'll hold the the switch in the on position and um, so you, you'll need to have at least one grab gap before the next switch 
so you can continue on with your market. Um, these stalls, this first stall is a glass version of what I did. And I did it that way for aesthetic reasons. These next stalls, um, they're the minimum blocks you need to create the effect. I wanted to show you that so that you could then go nuts with decorating your um, marketplace however you however you wanted. Now for the tough part of uh, how to kill these guys. Um, we did a lot of different systems trying this out. So we ran the cart into an area where the villager's head was in lava, but we couldn't do that and have them on the rail. Um, that killed them the quickest. If you don't mind doing your own cart return, you can skip this whole next part and, and just do that and, and pick up the cart each time. Um, and uh, this whole system will work without this next part. But this is really nice. Yeah, I think it does save you time uh, to just have an automatic cart return, a much simpler system in, in, in many ways. So um, you can just hack it with a, hack at the villager with a stone sword if you want. But um, when you push this black button then, what it does is, um, well, probably ought to mention how this works. I'll just give a good shot of this part on how to get these buttons right next to each other, powering completely different things. The uh, <clears throat> power comes back here and um, then goes on down this tower here and sends a pulse to this water timer. Can we have that again? If you'll trigger that. Trigger that. Sure. It sends a little pulse of water down here to this timer, which times for 10 seconds. Then this pulse comes back up this redstone tower no really fancy things there and to this memory cell. So let's stop there and explain what we did here. Now um, when I did this water timer we have uh, tutorials on water timers. What I did is I built it several different tiers here. I figured that six would be enough um, more than enough so I started with six and made sure the end started pretty close to the beginning. That's always helpful to me. But then the switchbacks, rather than going back and forth, um, like we show in some of our other things, uh, there's just one switchback going next to it. And this allows us to subtract time really easily. So you just change. Originally it was like this, and We wanted it to be a lot faster and more efficient. That was a little too long. So all we had to do is just to shorten it right there. Put a block right there. And it works just fine. And we could have shortened it anywhere along here. And that's a good way of, of building that. Okay, I'll stand by. Okay. So this is our trickiest most temperamental bud switch we've had we've made um, it's a T flip flop right Althorn that's what I'm seeing yes okay T flip flop what we what we got here is we have the water uh, in a pulse so that normally um, if you have a long stream of water it'll fire the piston at least twice when it starts when the water arrives and when it leaves. So uh, timing is here is important because this is hit, hooked to a button so you only get a pulse. So you may have to play around with this with relays here if it's a lot shorter than our distance to make sure that the piston stays open long enough to send water but not so long that it fires your butt switch twice.
And one way you can combat that is down here at this relay. If you're looking at me here, Red Ochre. Yeah, yeah. This relay down here, you can add um, time to this relay or even add a second relay to it to help combat that uh, pulse on the T flip flop. You just want it to send one pulse and not a rapid pulse, uh, multiple pulses. So that's a little tricky area there. Um, then one, once that uh, pulse goes back up here, let's get to this memory cell. Alright, let's demonstrate how this memory cell works. Um, as you saw before, the one line goes this way, the other line goes this way, the power is inverted again so that the, there's no power going to the memory cell. That's these two uh, redstone torches here that feed back on each other. If you'll here you start go. It. Now the power went to that, turning this one off, which turned that one on. When the water and holds the piston open. Yeah, holds that piston open. When the water timer, it, try that one more time. I didn't quite catch that, but uh, when the oh, sure. wa water timer uh, triggers this, then it reverses these two redstone torches, and that sends uh, that opens this up again. Then down here, coming off the the uh, memory cell we have a pulse saver <sighs> what it does is it sends a, sends this power down here while the memory cell is on just like this and because this is closed no power goes to the power rail um, and when it turns off then because this relay stores some energy it sends a pulse to that power rail and if you'll recognize this is the same it's hooked to the same block that the this torch is attached to that the white buttons attached to so both the red and so the black and the white button eventually triggers this um, this cell this uh, torch here and uh, The reason I, I I wired it like the reason I wired it like this is because you want the torch underneath the power rail to be off all the time until you will trigger it, and that's how come it's uh, reversed like that. Yeah, and and it also uh, doing it this way also allows it to act as a diode, so no power goes because you can't just put a T in here. Um, power will go every way every time you 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 do it, and that'll give all kinds of headaches. Yeah, you don't want the kill power to uh, go through that block and come over here and power the switch so that when you kill them the empty cart goes down to your market. Yeah. So um, that's... Did, did we not explain any any of the essential features? Are we. I think we I think we covered everything. It's a really complex wiring. This is the fourth or fifth time I've recreated this and each time I've gotten a little better at doing it. So I recommend you trying this out in creative before you put it in your own server. Yeah, we did build this in creative first uh, to test it out. We can see some of our tests. There's beyond the portcullis there. I don't know if you can see it. There's some of our early tests there. Um, so let's then, th so pretty much the video's over. I'm going to go through and try to get some nice screen shots for, um, the different systems here. S and, um, so you can get to this point and pause it to see how things work. Here's the... And feel free and post any any questions you have. Um, we'll try to answer all of your comments uh, on the uh, particular circuits and whatnot. Uh, if, if a lot of people are having problems with one of them, I'll do a special step-by-step -step on individual circuits and post links to that into the description of the video. Alright.
this is a good shot of the um, rail going around the detector area. It's 3x3 three three here. Oh, but we didn't show the color. It's time to show the color. The color. Um, so you're done. It's um, You've got all your markets stocked and the um, you, you don't want all these villagers in here making it f hard for you to play because of the lag. So I push the button. I've got a dispenser here with a bucket in it that has lava in it. And about a third of them, because this is three by three, and the trough here at the bottom is three long, about a third of them die in a punch. Um, and you click it again to turn it off. And uh, that can really help with your with your lag. Then a few minutes later, you can come back if that wasn't enough and do it again. This should be a good screenshot of the village. I want to pause it here to look at that. This uh, might this is a good shot how we set up the rail system at the top of the tower here now um, these two power rails right here we found were important they need to be hitting this brake here this unpowered power rail at the end at a lot hard enough speed to take them all the way to the the end of it otherwise they suffocate and die in this in this uh, block here and then this end is just a little more complicated. Uh, this is a good system, good screenshot of how to power this end. This relays here is important to function as a diode. I think we've got really good uh, tutorials and stuff and for both butt switches and water timers. I'm not going to spend any more time with that. Here's a good screenshot of the um, back of the buttons there. Pause it there. And this is a good screenshot of the memory cell right there. And then right there. Hopefully you don't get too confused by the thing just beyond it. That's the line going to the um, water timer but below it. But That's the uh, pulse saver. And then this is the s wiring for the switch system. Here's the way in to reverse the polarity if the default, once you've got it hooked up, is, is going uh, the wrong way. I opened this stall up here if you want to give another screenshot of this. Yeah, and this is just adds a sticky piston there. If you want to do that, we'll probably add this to our market uh, because we think it's really cool. And then here's uh, the ore switch. If you want to do that version of the indicator light, one more time, and the in uh, overflow that we have in our system now is really pretty simple. Uh, we learned something making this video. I originally had um, yeah, redstone on top of that. Not only do you not need it there, but if you know much about redstone to uh, bud switches, uh, that is a bud switch. And you don't want to turn that piston into a bud switch. Bad idea. Bad idea. All right. Well, uh, if you have any, if people have um, if you have requests for videos on specific components here uh, um, 
there was going to be quite a long list of uh, recommended videos to get you here. Uh, like you said, we recommend you build this in creative first. And we also recommend that you don't make this your first major redstone uh, project. Start with something simpler th than this um, and work your way up to it as a goal would be a good uh, way to do it. Any final words? Alpha? It took us about it took us about uh, three or four hours to design this system. Um, once we had it designed, it was a lot easier to, to recreate again to, to show you guys. But this is not simple. But uh, each individual component is pretty easy. You just add them together. Um, and it works like a charm. Yeah, and th like the the function of this, I mean, you might have thought my market was kind of uh, cutesy, but uh, the um, the function of this whole system is amazing. We uh, by doing that, and and one thing we didn't explain is uh, we save up our our cash crops which like I said was the the wheat and the sugar cane and we have a market day Althorn here opens a transaction with uh, the either the paper buyer or the um, wheat buy buyer and just buys tons of gems while I throw either paper or wheat at him and um, that allows us to buy in mass t so that if they change after the transactions done then you know we have days before to find a new um, paper or wheat seller or you know anything like that um, yeah because it can take you know 20 or 30 villagers to find uh, a villager that will even buy paper or wheat, let alone the ones that will sell the really good equipment. And so, you know, I've sat here for an hour killing villagers looking for good uh, vendors. I'm, and that's why we I'm, built the system. I know it took me an hour and a half to, um, to uh, get the diamond chest plate vendor we have. <laughs> yeah. But... but but being able to, you know, buy ten diamond chest plates is really convenient. Yes, it really makes that hour and a half really worth it. Now, um, the uh, you can do a lot of other things other than uh, um, kill the villagers in this way. Um, particularly with the next patch, you might turn it into some kind of zombie farm where you just re release them. For instance, if if you don't like uh, doing that, uh, the major reason we get rid of them is because we don't want to wait to get to solve our lag problems. <laughs> Main functional reason, I should say. All right, I think that's everything. Have fun. I hope. Thanks. Good luck at building this.